How can I tell my children I may be dying? They have enough problems of their own. I don't want to add to their burden. God, what if something happened unexpected? I would want them to know why I kept my illness a secret. Yes, merciful mother. That's what I'll do. I'll write them a letter, and I'll explain to them why I kept my blood disorder a secret. And how much I love them all. Beth seemed really anxious when we dropped her off at home on the way back from the casino. Yeah, well, she's probably just worried that Alistair's gonna figure out what I'm up to. What if he does? No telling what he'll do. Look, by the time that Alistair figures it out, it's going to be too late. Yeah. Looks like cocktail waitress lifting this key for me. I'll already be into his office and into his safe before he knows it. Then I'm going to get the goods on Alistair. I'll have Dr. Ackland undo whatever it was he did to Sheridan to make her forget that she loves me. And as for Alistair, he's going down along with his whole evil empire. Just be careful, okay? Tried killing his own daughter. He wouldn't think twice about killing you. Look, I'm not worried about Alistair, okay? He's gonna be in the casino where I'll probably be the rest of the night. Well, I'm calling it a night. Credit my winnings toward next time. I need to speak to my daughter before she leaves. Sheridan. Sheridan, my dear. I, I need to have a word with you back at my office. But Antonio just went to go get the car. Well, tell him you'll be home when we're finished. Can't whatever it is wait until tomorrow? No, it can't. What I have to say regards your in-laws, the Lopez Fitzgeralds. What about them? I'll tell you in my office, where we won't be disturbed. Becca, did I hear right? I got a call from Judge Riley's office. The hearing is tonight. Yes. Isn't it wonderful? You are going to be able to adopt little Ethan and make Teresa the most miserable woman on the planet. Yeah, right, like they're going to be hanging out together in public, waiting for your father to hear about. Okay, fine, but I still think there's definitely something going on between them. Whew. You know, if Daddy and Simone find out hey, about it. Hey, just chill out, all right? Give your mother the benefit of the doubt. Well, you know, it's kind of hard when I catch them together all the time. You know, I bet your mother and father are upstairs right now chilling together. You know what? I'll be right about that. Liza speaking. We received the signal that your airbag deployed. Do you need help? I repeat, do you need help? Control yourself, okay? Important. Well, it's not that easy when these uh, hateful, horrible people are taking my son from me. Ignore him, Teresa. You can't afford to engage in any acrimonious behavior prior to the proceedings anyway. If you do, you could be incarcerated permanently, as in indefinitely. All parties involved in the adoption hearing of Ethan Lopez Fitzgerald Crane, please take your places in court. It's time. Chad, you were wrong. My mother isn't here. And it's late, so where could she possibly be, right? Unless she is out with Julian, like I said. Eve? Oh, Daddy, no. It's, um, it's, it's me and Chad. Oh, sweetheart, I stayed up late reading this book, waiting for your mother to come home. I guess she hasn't gotten home yet, huh? Oh, um, well, where do you think she is? I don't know. 
Most likely she's at the hospital. Where else would she be this time of night? Out someplace with Julian Crane. Hello, this is Skycom Emergency. I repeat, we have indication of an airbag deployment. Do you need help? All right, if you can hear me but you're unable to speak, don't panic. I'm going to notify the emergency services in your area of your exact location. I'll be back with you once help is on the way. You by. I, I came to see Luis. I need to give him something. I wish you would have called first, because Luis just had a... Oh. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. Hey there, hot stuff. Ma, it's me. Oh, my God, Luis. Pretty good disguise, huh? Yeah, if it wasn't for your voice, I would have never recognized you. Yeah, well, that's good. If I can fool my own mother, I guess I can fool just about anybody. Mia, why are you in this disguise? Would you believe that he's going to a bladed April Fool's party? No, I would not. What about that he's showing me how to disguise myself for undercover work? No, I wouldn't believe that either. Luis, por favor, mijo. What is going on? Why are you in a Crane Industries uniform? Okay, okay, I'll tell you, but you got to promise not to tell anyone. Yeah, fine, I won't. All right, I'm in disguise because I'm going to work as a janitor at Crane Industries. Uh, Luis, I know you're desperate for work since you got laid off the force, but why would you work for the Cranes? You hate that family. I'm not doing it for the money, okay? I'm going to break into Alistair's office safe, steal his secrets, and then expose him for the lying, cheating criminal he really is. Would you care for a nightcap, my dear? No, thank you. But I would like to get home to Antonio. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you're happy with Antonio. Hey, what is so urgent that it couldn't wait until tomorrow? As I said, it's about Antonio's family. Well, he's still estranged from them, if that's what you mean. No, no, Sheridan, no. It's come to my attention that you used your new position with Crane Charities to help Fox bail Teresa out of jail. Yes. I did. Fox told me what happened. How Rebecca had Teresa arrested for kidnapping. Again. Rebecca has persecuted Teresa's entire family to avenge Gwen's baby's death, and you let her get away with it. Make sure your bleeding heart doesn't stain the carpet. Teresa does not deserve what has happened to her. And she's not alone. There are a lot of women in her position. So I allocated money from Crane Charities for Fox to pay for Teresa's bail. And I would do it again. Would you now? Yes, I would. I see. Look, please, don't give me a hard time about this. Teresa is Antonio's sister. Little Ethan's his nephew. Spare me the recap. The issue is the use of Crane money for personal reasons. Oh, wait a minute. Rebecca used Crane money and influence against Teresa for personal reasons. Very well. If you want to squander the Crane Foundation's money, it's your business. But if you run out of funding, you'll be out of a job. I understand. Just don't do something this rash again without consulting me first. <sighs> is that all? For now. The truth is, Teresa isn't a threat to the Cranes. What are you saying Luis is? 
Where did that come from? Is Luis on your mind often? I remember being in love with him. Past tense. All I'm saying is that Luis used to tell me that the reason you didn't want us together was because you were afraid that I would help him to expose the Crane's secrets. Secrets that would bring down you, Julian, and the entire Crane Empire. That's preposterous, and the very reason I've been opposed to you being involved with Luis all along. He never loved you, Sheridan. Luis filled your head with nonsense about our supposed crimes against his family. Unlike Antonio, Luis was no good for you. I'm glad he's out of your life. And if Luis knows what's good for him, he'll stay out. Steve. Please tell the court why you and your husband wish to adopt the child in question. Well, since Lilithan has been living in our home, I have grown to care for him very much. And it's obvious by the way Lilithan acts towards me that he cares for me as well. I see. Yeah, I see. I see another deal being made, that's what I see. And my husband, Ethan, the child's namesake and godfather, already had a bond with the boy prior to my mother and uh, her husband gaining custody. And living together full-time has only strengthened that bond. So why have you and uh, Mr. Winthrop asked to adopt the child rather than having your mother and his biological father raise him? Lie, Gwen. Say what I told you to. My husband and I are of a better age to be parents to a young child. And as Your Honor may know, my stepfather is a very powerful man. Where's Riley in his hip pocket? Julian travels a lot for business, and he can't always be there for the boy. But my husband, Ethan, can and has been with Julian and my mother's blessing. I see. Your Honor, I, um, I love little Ethan, and he loves me. I just want what's best for him. I know you think that means giving little Ethan back to Teresa, but I will never agree to it, Ethan. Never. Oh, thank you, Mr. Winthrop. So now the court will hear from Mr. Julian Crane. To so where is the boy's biological father? I'd like to know the same thing. <sighs> thank God you're all right. I don't know what I'd do if I lost you again. Julian. Yes, my love. What happened? Well, you were pulling off the road and I skidded. Ended up here. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, TC is going to be so upset with me. He loves this car. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. No, no. This be like the no. time the garage called TC at home and then he, he came and caught us at the diner. No, no, Julia, no. I can't have anybody see us here together. I'll, I'll just call a tow truck, and, and they'll take it to a garage. Did you forget the bloody car. Listen to me. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Oh. Oh, God, this is Alistair's fault. He's the one who sent us in a goose chase to, to see some young man that he knew wasn't our son. All right, yes, we had our hopes dashed. 
I feel so guilty now. I have ruined Jesus' car. It's all right. So what are we going to do about this? How are we going to fix this? I'll call a tow truck. Only you can't be here when they come. It would just raise far too many questions. This is Liza, your Skycom advisor again. If you can hear me, we are aware that your airbag deployed. Emergency services in your area have been notified. Jordan, they can't send anybody. They can't send anybody. You, nobody can see us together. We have been informed that the police, paramedics, and the vehicle's owner, T.C. Russell, are en route to you now. Oh. Hey, what's going on? Whitney, Skycom called. The airbag of my car deployed. Your mother has my car tonight. Okay, my mother was in an accident. Honey, oh, is she hurt? What's going on? I don't want to alarm you, but when they tried to get a hold of her, they couldn't reach her. Oh, my God. Do you know where Dr. Russell is? Well, yeah, the highway patrol said that she's on North 22 near 137. I know where that is. Come on, I'll drive. Okay. Hey, Dad, maybe... Thank you. Thank you for driving. I, I don't want to drive. You know, why don't we leave Simone a note so, so that she knows where we are? No, sweetheart, let's not do that. I don't want to worry her. You know, if anything has happened to your mother, God, I don't know what I'll do. Okay. Oh, DC, please answer the phone. Let me tell you that I'm all right and that there's no reason to come. Please. Please don't already be on the way. I cannot go into Alistair's office to learn of his secrets, Mio. That's a risk. I have to. No, I'm telling you, Alistair has a safe. It's hidden behind a bookcase. And I'm telling you, it is loaded with information that will not only bring him down, but his company as well. Right. And you along with it. Well, not if I'm careful. Uh, no, Luis, no. Mama, this is too dangerous. Mama. Look, don't you want to know what happened to Papa? All right, now, now, he didn't skip town because he was caught stealing money. There's no way. Even so, Luis, I don't see how this is complete. Please. You pray for Papa to come home every day. You light a candle for him every night. And what if there's information in the safe that, that could lead me to him to find out where he is? Mio, I would give anything to know what happened to your father. And seeing him once more before I... Well, before any more time goes by would be the answer to my prayers, but not at the risk of losing you. Don't worry. Well, we left Alistair at the casino. You look like you'd be there all night. You see that? Look, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna get the goods on Alistair before anyone's the wiser, okay? Relax, okay? It's gonna be fine. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Please, could you... Please, help me talk some sense into my son. I'm sorry, Pilar. It's, he thinks it'll help him get Sheridan back if he does this. GC is already on his way over here. What are we going to do? Well, call him on his cell phone. Tell him that there's no need to come. Tell him to turn back. Get you. Oh, sweetheart, are you all right? Skycom called the highway patrol and said that your car was in an accident. I'm on my way right now. No, no, TC, there's no need for you to come. I'm, I'm fine, really. I, I, I swerved to avoid an animal and I skidded off the, the street, but I'm fine. It's no big deal. Yeah, but they said the airbags deployed. It did, but it's, it's okay. I'm fine. There's no sense in you even worrying about me. I, I, I'm just going to have the car towed to a garage, and and they'll put in a new airbag tomorrow. It, it might need a little body work. I can't really tell yet, but I'm going to pay for it, because I know how much you love this car. Sweetheart, I don't give a damn about the car or how much it costs. I only care about you. Well, I told you, I'm fine. Really, I mean, just don't even worry about me. Go home, and, and I'll be there as soon as I can. 
Well, let me take you to the hospital, see if you're okay. No, TC, please, honey. I feel guilty enough already, okay? So just, just go home and wait for me there, okay? Please? Okay, honey. I won't add to your stress. But I love you. I love you too, TC. I managed to get TC not to come. I had Sky Calm call for a tow truck. They're also stopping the police and the EMS from coming. Oh, good, that'll buy us some time. Yeah, definitely going to need a tow truck to get this car out of here. Oh, well, I'm going to get you somewhere where it's dry where we wait for the truck. I can't stay here with you, and I don't want you staying here by yourself. You want me to head back to your house, Dutch? Absolutely not. Whitney, your mother thinks I give a damn about that car. I don't care about the car. I only care about her. Chad, step on it. Got it, Coach. Luis really gets to you, doesn't he? What are you talking about? Look, I, I don't want to... I, I love you. And I love Antonio. And I'm going to stay with him. I'm, I'm not going to get back with Luis. Good. But... I won't lie to you. I am curious about what Luis used to tell me. About how we cranes have so many skeletons in our closet. So many secrets. And I can't help but think that he's right. Sheridan, it's getting late. I, I think you should go home to your husband. You know what? I know that you're trying to dismiss me right now, and I don't appreciate it. All right, if we have secrets, then we should let them be out in the open so that they don't haunt us anymore. Like, my memory that I have as a child that night standing in the living room of the mansion with blood on my hands. You know, after all this time, I still don't know if that's just my imagination or not. Of course it was your imagination. Luis convinced you it was real simply to poison your mind against your own family. Now, that is my memory. All right, and I had that long before I ever met Luis. Even so, Luis took the wild imaginings of a troubled young girl and gave them an ominous spin to serve his own purposes. <laughs> there is no crane evil, my dear. It's all in Luis's imagination. He's influenced you, Sheridan. Brainwashed you into thinking ill of me, your own father. I'm sorry to say this, Father, but I believe Luis. I trust his instincts. Thanks for believing in me, Sheridan. I won't let you down. And I promise I'll find out every awful thing Alistair's hiding and expose it for all the world to see. Since the hearing was moved up last minute, I I'm afraid my husband couldn't be here. You see, as we speak, he's out doing good deeds, helping the hopeless and the downtrodden. Oh, what a crock. But luckily, I have his power of attorney with me. <laughs> like my platinum card, <laughs> I never leave home without it. Does my father know about that? Your Honor, Julian and I really care about little Ethan. That's why we sought custody in the first place, to take him away from his violent, unemployed, and homeless mother. And we agree that Ethan and Gwen would make far better parents to little Ethan than either we or his birth mother. Would you prefer cash or bonds this month? You just surprised me with some real estate. Love the beach. Uh, oh, I bet I could get a sweet deal on Sonny Von Bulow's estate in Newport. You know, Your Honor, whether it's Newport or Bar Harbor, a man with your physique should summer at the beach. I mean, just think of it. The hot sand, the pounding surf, the tide. Wild up like a Greek god. Oh. I don't know if I could control myself. 
why don't you meet me in chambers? Let's find out. Well, everything seems to be in order regarding Mrs. Crane speaking for her husband. That and the testimony I've heard compel me to award full and permanent custody of the child to Mr. and Mrs. Winthrop. Please. Your Honor, please. Please, Your Honor, you can't take my child from me. Order, order in the court. Teresa, getting upset isn't going to help anything, all right? Fox is right. Riley is ruled. Grows a scene and you'll lose. Any hope of ever spending time with little Ethan again? It's not fair, you know. It's just not fair. So I hereby rule that henceforth the child will be known as Ethan Winthrop Jr. All rise. This hearing is now adjourned. Oh, my God. Folks, you're welcome to stay in here at the rain for a while. Oh, thank you. Yes. Easy. I want your leg. I'm the present time. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, you people got good manners. For city folk. <clears throat> but excuse me, do you have uh, something to keep my lady friend warm here, perhaps? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my horse Walter. Uh, he loved this till the day he died. <laughs> I ain't been able to look at dog food since. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Don't let the bed bugs bite. No, <laughs> <you're> <laughs> Uh, I ain't kidding. Uh, this place, it's crawling with critters. <clears throat> this, of course, is not cashmere, and <laughs> this place is not as luxurious as you deserve, but we are alone. <gasps> well, not quite. Don't tell me you're frightened of babe there. Oh, no. <laughs> We had pigs when I was growing up. Chickens, too. God, I haven't thought about those days. I don't know how long. It was so simple back then. Now everything is just... No, 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 no. Don't get upset. Come on. Let's sit down. Easy. Yeah. Now sit down. And just take it easy. Then the rain stops. Here. Easy. Oh. Thanks for taking such good care of me, Julian. Well, what else would I do for the woman I love? I'm sorry that uh, we didn't find our son tonight. It's not your fault. What? You did everything you could to find him. It's Alistair who keeps throwing up the roadblocks. Well, thank you for understanding. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let me in there. Let my body heat to help keep you warm. Mm, the dampness makes it feel so much colder. Mm, but the sound of the rain is nice. I haven't listened to the sound of rain for so long. Nor have I, if I ever did. I'm sure right, it is nice. It's very peaceful. Just the sound of the rain. Not too hard to beat. It's not right. I should be at home with TC, not here with you. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep putting you in uncomfortable positions. It's just... I won't mean, lie to you, Eve. I love you with all my being. And I couldn't be happier as I am at this very moment alone with you here, all wet and disheveled. Mm. But you know... You've never looked more beautiful. I'm not going to betray T.C. God, I'm so sorry. I will conduct myself as a gentleman now. I... 
I just want to take care of you. Tonight, tomorrow. Always. She did more than skid off the road. She ran into a tree. No wonder the airbags deploy. I mean, what could have happened? I mean, this is more than a fender bender. She could have been killed. And there's blood on the airbags. I mean, uh, why did she say this was no big deal? No, I didn't want you to worry. Or maybe I'm better at no good again, Chad. Beef! Beef, are you out there? Dude, where the hell could she be? Winnie and I'll look for her, Coach. No, I I'll come with you guys. No, no, Daddy, Daddy, stay here in case Mom comes back. All right, I'll try to get the car away from the tree. Okay, come on, let's try to find Mom before her Daddy finds out she could be up to something, okay? Let's go home and tell little Ethan the good news. He never has to eat refried beans uh, again. Rebecca, Gwen and I will be the ones to tell little Ethan that he's our son now, okay? And always will be. I will never agree to let you give him back to Teresa. Okay, uh, fine, fine. Um, listen, I'm just gonna go thank the judge personally for such a uh, quick and correct decision. Let's go, honey. Uh, Teresa, I'm sorry. You lying bastard, you get out of my sight. With pleasure. Honey, let's go home and see our son. Teresa, don't retort, we're still in court. Look. I'm going to continue looking for precedent to appeal this tragic travesty of injustice. If only dubious, it's doable. What do um, Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Just keep on keeping up. Okay. Let's get the hell out of here. You know, uh, now that I've lost little Ethan, I, I don't really have anything else to lose, you know? I don't like the sound of that. What are you talking about? Well, I'm gonna get revenge on Ethan and Gwen and Rebecca for taking my child away from me. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin their lives in the same way they've ruined mine. So help me God. Blotter, your nose is bleeding. What's wrong? Sheridan, I swear on my love for you that Luis is wrong. The cranes have nothing to hide. Liar. Are you sure, Father? Yes, my dear. We have no secrets. Luis brainwashed you with lies. Nothing he says is true. Now, <laughs> it's getting late. I'll get you home to your husband. Father wrong, Sheridan. And you'll see proof of what he's done to you and me. God knows who else. Once I expose him for the monster he is, we'll be together. Promise. I'm sorry, I promised I'd behave. I, I just, I... I couldn't resist. Okay, the footprints in the mud lead right in here. Yeah, but there's two sets. If one's your mother, who's she with? 
I'll bet you she's in there with Julian Crane. That's hey, what she's hey, in hey, there. Hey, come on, come on now. You don't know that for sure. It's, it's probably just a farmer that owns the place to let her in. Well, why don't we see about that? <sighs> I knew it. When my father catches him in there together, he's going to kill my mom and Julian, and I can't wait. It's going to take a tow truck to get this damn car out of here. Whitney and Chad haven't come back yet. Maybe I'll go find them and help them find Eve. Maybe they're by that barn. 